Hey everyone. So welcome to 30-2 Diploma Prep. Um, I love doing these things. I want you to know that right off the bat. Um, these are one of my most favorite things to do and incorporating the videos um, I'm hoping will help you at home as well just to stay on top of uh, everything that's going on and to try and get the most out of this time we have together uh, to just kind of go through the material, review the material together, um, maybe take some of those things that are stressing you out a little bit and get you feeling better about those and then also um, reiterate the stuff you know so that you know you know it. Okay, that's kind of the purpose of our time together. Um, yeah, so with the videos, um, when you're not watching, when you're not involved in the live portions, um, what I really want you to do with these videos, the nice thing about videos is you can stop them, you can rewind them, um, you can just stop them to think about it for a minute, or you can play it back. Um, make sure you're doing all of those things, okay? When I go through a question, make sure you pause, um, try the question yourself, and then you do the question, or sorry, try the question yourself and then watch me do the question, and then you can compare um, how you did versus uh, how I did, okay? Okay, so in building this course, I've divided our time up into kind of four different sections, part one, part two, part three, part four. Inside each of those sections, we have kind of little subsections. So what happens in, in the live program is we would go through section one and then um, there'd be some extra practice, okay? So the, the live sessions and then consequently the videos are going to match what the live sessions would have been, okay? So for instance, in part one, right now we are doing the introduction. Now, there won't be any extra practice with the introduction because we're just introducing the concept. We're talking about what the diploma looks like, the breakdown of the diploma and that sort of stuff, okay? But then we're gonna go into section two, which is simplifying rational expressions. So the video, which in your video list will be labeled number two, okay? It'll all look the ex exact same as what you see here. So it'll say video two, simplifying rational expressions, okay? And that would be the live teaching portion that I will do um, in our diploma prep, you get to do it at home at your own time, okay? After the video, what you'll notice in your book is it'll say the same title, but then it'll say extra practice. The extra practice is not something that I go through every question with, rather that's your, your time to kind of do your homework type thing. It's your time to work on your own. So at the end of each, um, sorry, at the end of each extra practice section, you'll see an answer key for that section, okay? So all the answers are there for the extra practice section. And then for the, the front matter, all the answers we will go through together through either the live session or the video session that you're watching right now, okay? So in part one, part one will be divided up into four sections. So there's four videos for it. Simplifying rational expressions will be after the introduction, then operations with rational expressions, and then rational equations and applications. Um, I'm heavy on rationals here, not because like rationals is 50% of your exam or anything like that, um, but usually rationals is the hardest thing you face in 30-2, so I want to have a chance to really slow down and get you super comfortable with rationals, okay? Then we move to part two, and in part two you'll see three videos, video five, six, and seven. We've got polynomial functions, then applications of polynomial functions, and then sinusoidal functions, so we'll look at um, the actual functions and applications in the same video for that day. Then we go to part three, um, which is, we'll deal with exponent and log graphs, regression and modeling. Then we'll do laws of logarithms and applications and set theory. And then the last part, part four, there'll be three videos, video 11, 12, and 13. Um, and we'll deal here with permutations and combinations. Your teacher may have called that counting methods at one point. Um, and then probability, and then we'll end with game theory, okay? All right, so uh, the purpose of this video is just to kind of introduce what your diploma will look like. Um, this is kind of the breakdown of what a typical diploma will look like. So there are actually, as far as Alberta Ed is concerned, there are three uh, main units in the course. They are logic and reasoning, probability, and relations and functions. So inside logic and reasoning, you've got puzzles and games and set theory. So you're looking at about seven questions on your exam uh, around that. So it's about 15 to 20%. Probability, 
you're looking at odds, you're looking at mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive events, independence and dependent events, then the fundamental counting principle permutations and combinations are also in there. Then, so that's about a third of your exam. Uh, the biggest portion is relations and functions, which is about half of your exam. In there, there'll be rational expressions and rational equations. So you're looking at like six questions on rational expressions and equations. Then you've got logarithms, exponential equations, and applications. So then that's all exponents and logs here. So you're looking at about seven questions there. And then five questions around polynomials and sinusoidal functions. Okay, so... Your exam is Wednesday, January 20th at 9 a.m. That is when the diploma is. Uh, you have six hours to do this diploma. You have copious amounts of time, okay? So don't stress about the timing of it at all. You could like take a nap and come back and check your answers and you'd still be fine, okay? Um, now, that being said though, don't ever fixate on a question for too long, okay? For a couple of reasons. Number one, um, there is a time factor there. You don't want to waste your time on one question. But number two, you also don't want to fry your brain on a question you're having a really hard time with. And then um, that is that is to the expense of um, the rest of the question. So if you have a question on an exam, and this is the same for any exam, if you have a question where you're just not quite sure what to do with that question, skip it, okay? Go do everything that you know how to do first, first. Okay, that's really, really important because it keeps your brain juices flowing. Uh, it keeps your um, mental health up, keeps you feeling positive about the exam. Then go back and start filling in all the stuff that you're not quite sure how to do. Um, while, while I'm thinking about that, um, as, we, as we talk about doing a good job on a diploma, um, <clears throat> you have this, <clears throat> sorry, you have this big uh, bubble sheet of answers that you'll have to put in, don't fill that out till the end because you're gonna be jumping through questions and it's really complicated if you skip a bubble in the wrong way and then you have to go and erase everything, okay? So don't fill in that bubble sheet until the end when you're satisfied with uh, what all your answers are. You know, um, like you can write on the book, so just write all your answers on the book, make sure you're happy with everything and then fill in your bubble sheet. Um, so your exam will be broken into kind of two parts, the, the machine scored part and the written part. Um, the machine scored part is worth 75% of your mark. Um, and in there, you'll see 24 multiple choice and eight numeric response. And then the written questions will be worth 25% of your mark. Um, and in there, you'll have two questions and each question has four uh, kind of sections to them. And usually they're connected to some sort of common um, common storyline or, or common thread of some sort, okay? It doesn't mean they'll all be in the same, um, in the same unit or anything like that, um, but there'll be some sort of overarching theme to one question, and then there'll be four little questions in that theme, okay? All right, so what sorts of questions are you going to be looking at? Um, it's 30% procedural, 34% conceptual, and 36% problem solving. Now, procedural questions just mean um, these are kind of the questions uh, that you first do when you're learning a concept. They're just the, the kind of rote memory, practice the basic sort of questions. So can you tie your shoe, okay? 34% um, being conceptual, that gets a little deeper. There's a few more layers with conceptual questions. Now it's more, can you describe how to tie your shoe? Don't just do it, but tell me how to do it. Do you understand the, the layers involved in tying your shoe? Could you explain it to another person? Okay, and then that last section of problem solving, can you tie your shoe in a new way? Can you apply your knowledge? So, so here you're gonna see the questions where you might not know exactly how to do them right off the bat. Um, you might have to skip that one and do some of the uh, procedural or conceptual questions first. Um, but then as you do things, you'll be like, okay, no, I have tools in my toolbox. There's things I know on ways I could approach this question and then you go for it, okay? Okay, some, some study tips uh, before we get into um, the full review of the course. Um, make sure you schedule your life out carefully. Um, make sure you're giving yourself time to practice, time to study, time to watch these videos over and over and over again. Um, make sure you're de-stressing. Um, this is important because your brain can only handle so much, okay? so. As you plan those study blocks, 
you need to also make sure you're planning fun blocks in between, okay? Um, I would always rather see kids, if they're planning a three hour study block to actually study for an hour and then go for a walk for 20 minutes and then come back and study for another hour or something like that, okay? Chunk it up, get outside, get some fresh air. Um, it's really, really important to reboot your brain while you're studying, okay? Stay healthy, rest, eat well, keep the big picture in mind, okay? Um, thoughts on written. So, you have to make sure you approach written response questions very, very carefully. When I mark students in math, what I often see is this. Let's just say this is where the question is, and they come right to here and they start answering a few things, okay? And then they think, okay, good, now I'm out of space though, so now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to answer a bunch of stuff, and this is all looking good, but I'm out of space, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to answer a bunch of stuff, okay? And what happens is, their, their work becomes this kind of treasure map that the marker has to follow. You have to remember that the marker is going to be, you know, I don't know, about 100 teachers in Alberta, uh, in Edmonton, um, marking upwards of 9,000 exams in three days, okay? You do not want them to have to search for your answer. You want things to be very clear. You want things to be very concise for them. So think about an English essay. If you were going to write an English essay, where would you start that essay? You would start it in the top left-hand corner. So you would go right here and you would write. And then once you got out of space, you come up here and you would write and your work would be much easier to follow, okay? So make sure you have some thought in your planning. There is scrap paper at the back. Um, there are tarot pages, tear those out. Do a little rough copy of all your written questions first before you go and do the good copy on your thing, just like you would an essay, okay? Um, define the terms you're talking about. For example, if you, uh, if they ask you to explain how to determine a non-permissible value, your explanation should start with what a non-permissible value is, why they occur. So if they say find the non-permissible values, you would say, okay, non-permissible values are created because we don't want a very we don't want the bottom of a fraction to equal zero because division of zero is not possible. So I would look at the question and I would look at all the factored forms and I would set each factor to zero and I would know that that is not allowed. And then you would do it, okay? Always speak in complete sentences. Uh, sorry, I skipped. Well, that's what I was talking about back there, but start your work in the top left-hand corner and work down and always speak in complete sentences, okay? Okay, um, just a couple of uh, vocabulary words I want to talk to you about um, in your, um, in your booklet, I've given you all the math directing words, um, but these are three common ones and I just wanna make sure you understand what they mean. If it says explain, just like I was talking about on the previous slide, um, explain means use words, okay? So don't just do the question. I remember marking a question once where um, it was a permutation question and it essentially said, explain how Sally would solve this and then solve it. And it was like two points and how Sally would solve it was worth one point and solving it was worth another point. And it, it was really hard for teachers because they're like, well, they did it. So they know how to do it. But when, when we had to mark the explain portion, we covered up the math work. Okay. Um, and we had to look at just the words. Where are the words that explain what we're doing? Okay, um, so that's super, super important. Compare means to compare and contrast. It's not just tell me what's the same, it's tell me what's different, it's tell me both, okay? Um, and you'll often see these, I'll go through a few with you over the next, uh, over the course of our time together, um, but it's a matter of, you're often comparing two functions and so you want to do something to this function and do something to the other function, but then you want some sort of a conclusion below, you want to say, they are, or this aspect is the same because they're both something. This aspect is different because blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's how a good compare and contrast question is gonna sound. Um, take note of what I just did though. I just said compare and contrast. Um, the question will only say compare, but compare means to compare and contrast. And then determine, you need to arrive at an answer. There has to be logical steps that help you to arrive at that answer, okay? So you can't just state what the answer is and prove that it works. Um, 
that doesn't determine anything. That doesn't arrive at your answer. Okay, you can't say the answer is two because when I plug two in, um, I'm gonna get a, a true statement, okay? Uh, you have not arrived at that answer of two. So somehow you have to show algebraic steps so that you arrive at the answer of two, okay? All right, so in your books that you've been uh, given, uh, at the very first of each set of books, you will notice that you have a formula sheet um, and those math directing words, okay? I gave you three of the mo more important ones, but the whole list is there. Um, make sure you're taking a look at those stuff, those uh, sheets all the time as we go through this course together, okay? Um, super important that uh, you've got those kind of side by side. Even if you want to rip them out of your book so that you have them right there and you can go back and forth on them, that would be fine as well, okay? All right, so that's it for the introduction. Um, I'll see you in the next video and we'll get started in on rationals. Take care.